Hi friends, today I'm going to explain how to create Azure VM and how to set up the IIS on Azure VM and also how to deploy some sample HTML or .NET pages to the IIS. Prerequisites for particular task is you have to have Microsoft Azure account. Probably you can create the trial account so that you can get 15,000 rupees uh, trial balance so that without any cost you can you will be able to create all those resources what I'm going to show in this session it will approximately cost you a few rupees and then you can uh, stop those instances once the work is done let us first understand what is Azure VM so usually if you want to configure your website you may need some kind of server so that you can set it up on your uh, on-premises servers or you can create some Azure VM instances on the cloud. There are multiple ways to deploy your website. One is app services, which is a managed service, or you can even set, configure that website on a blob storage, or you can take Azure VM and then you can configure that. The main difference is like when you take app services, that is completely managed by the cloud provider. You don't need to worry about the scalability. You don't need to worry about the security and upgrades. Whereas when you create your own VM, you need to maintain the complete server in terms of security, scalability, upgrades, any other related issues. But the cost will be less compared to app services. So if you want to have a huge website uh, where millions of requests are re expected you if you you can't depend on the app services rather you have to go with the vms because the billing will be less and also you can't uh, completely rely on app services as there are some limitations let us first start azure vm so to create azure vm i'm just clicking on the create a service or you can directly search in the search bar Azure VM. Either way, you can go ahead. Okay, I'm just simply going to the create a resource. Under the compute, you can see a virtual machine. Click on that. So I have pay as you go option, and then you can select. Uh, resource group if you have not created it you can also create new for my vm demo is my resource group name virtual machine name so i'm giving for my vm to host website so you can select reason reason is very important for example if you are expecting more traffic from us better set it up this vm instance also in that particular region so that that performance uh, website performance will be better in case if you are hosting this particular website in india but the traffic is coming from us definitely you can see the difference in the performance so the uh, okay i'm selecting us east to U, east to us you can either select East US, US2. There are plenty of locations based on your traffic. You can select one of the location. Um, for time being South Central US, that's fine. Availability options. So here you can see availability set and availability zone and no infrastructure redundancy required. I will definitely select no infrastructure redundancy required as I'm just running demo. But usually if you set it up availability set, so it will configure your second mission in different rack space. So what happens like when there are upgrades available? Now your all missions are going to shut it down until those upgrades apply, apply to the VMs. So in this case, just to avoid that downtime and increase the SLAs, you can select availability set so that one mission will be in one rack space the other mission will be in the other rack space so that when the upgrades happens in this particular rack space still your other server is uh, running so that the failover mission is ready and 
there won't be any traffic issues or on uh, your website avail unavailability issues so that's why you can select availability set to increase this sla or high availability of your website or your vm you can select availability zone the main difference is when you select availability set they are actually located in uh, two different racks or completely different uh, storage units but whereas when it is availability zone it is completely in the different zone each region may have two or three uh, availability zones so for example i'm selecting here south central us as a as one region so south central us have three different regions now i can select availability two different availability zones so that in case if the availability zone a got some interruptions or disaster still your zone b is working that means your application is still available so you are trying to increase your sls and high availability of your website or application or your vm so that's how it works availability set is located in two different rack spaces whereas availability zones are completed to different zones where your servers are located so as i mentioned uh, i'm going to go with the no infrastructure redundancy required because i don't worry about uh, for the demo but when you are working for the real time definitely you need to select one of the option for the high availability okay so if you have already predefined image then you can select uh, else microsoft is providing plenty of options here so you can select ubuntu red hat all this but as i'm going to launch some uh, ias with some website i'm going to select windows server so windows server 2016 is fine for me windows server 2016 data center i'm selecting here and azure spot instances azure spot instances is started uh, recently uh, this is this will help you to reduce your cost for example there are lot of uh, computings which are not being used and uh, uh, just to uh, get your vm at the low cost you can select the azure spot instances so that you you are actually bidding for the particular spot instances and then you you are getting for the low cost when the load is more in the particular uh, region automatically uh, with the prior notice little prior notice they will take back those missions it's always good to go with uh, testing purposes or uh, the development uh, purposes you can use these spot instances but for the production or uat uh definitely is not recommended because they can pull back any time uh, based on the load for the particular data center so let us select no for now don't worry about it now in the vm size you can select the minimum thing because i don't worry about how the con how the performance is as it is going to be demo but again if you are going to do it for the production or development you can go ahead with the different type of instances definitely for the production you need a high high end mission so there are different types of uh, uh, families here that means different types of virtual machines general purpose compute optimized memory optimized uh, pro, uh, cpu optimized there are different uh, type of machines you can select one of them so for now i'm just taking b1 which is a basic one and select that's good so now uh, let me come back here coming to the resource groups these are the uh, for example you are creating a website and you are taking set of resources for the vm uh, there there should be a storage there are some other components which may be required for this particular vm all those components if you keep it under the specific resource group it will be easy to manage or to delete all those particular resources available under the particular resource group so that's why always you know keep all the related resources under one particular resource group the next one is subscription so if you create a particular subscription and uh, uh, assign all the resources required for that particular purpose for example you are going to host a website for a website you need uh, the front end uh, servers also the middleware also you need to host your database so all these things if you can keep under one subscription it will be very easy to track for the billing uh, for example in one particular company there are 50 different teams working for various various websites or various applications devops uh, development 
games or uh, enterprise applications so it is very easy to assign one particular subscription to each team so that i can track like how much they are consuming on my cloud and i can also uh, monitor who is uh, consuming more and who is consuming less and what purpose they are using it so that's why better always have a subscriptions so coming down uh, you can create a, a username this username and password uh, will be helpful when you want to access your windows uh, vm remotely so better remember your username and password so as i want to access my windows desktop or windows uh, data center remotely i have to enable rdp so uh, if you want to expose your uh, http and https for example if you are going to launch a website and you want to expose better you expose that http and https for timing i'm taking http with the port number 80 and the rdp 3389 okay that's good so allow selected ports i already uh, entered that this will allow all ip addresses to access the virtual machine this is only recommended for testing okay good so already have a windows license for example if you already have your windows license which you are using for your company for maybe development or for your on-premises data center you can use the same so that you can save at least up to 40 percent of cost oh it, it's given like 49 percent of the cost so better get the benefit of it for uh, as i don't have i'm just selecting no but in case if you have you have to enter the details of that i confirm i have eligible windows server okay so i'm selecting no for now as i do not have let us go with the this so you can select a premium ssd or standard hdd or standard ssd so based on your hard disk the performance also will uh, matter definitely you know if you are selecting a standard hdd the performance will be low whereas a premium ssd the performance will be far better so you can uh, so based on the type of scenario you are going to deal with you can select the type of ssd i'm going with the standard hdd because uh, to, for, to save the cost so the encryption type so usually to encrypt your disk you can select this i'm going with the default uh, uh, encryption at rest with a platform managed key but if you want to go with the encryption at rest with a customer customer managed key you can create the one but i don't need that the next one is enable ultra disk compatibility so anyway my current selected vm doesn't support this but uh, azure ultra disks uh, offer high throughput high iops and consistent low latency disk storage for azure uh, infrastructure virtual machines this new offering provides top of the line performance at the same availability levels as existing disk offerings so one major benefit uh, with ultra disk is dynamically you can change the performance of the ssd along with your workloads without the need to restart your vms that's a main advantage but yeah uh, anyway i'm not going to select this in case if you are creating some kind of production missions or uat missions you can consider uh, this one the next one is data disk you can add and configure additional data disk for your virtual mission or attach existing disk for example if you want additional disk space uh, apart from what you selected earlier here you can uh, create a new disk or you can attach if you already have a existing disk uh, which you used for the other purposes for example if you create a new disk you can select here none empty disk or storage blob snapshot what the type of source uh, i'm for example none and then you can select what is the size you need and then you can also select what type of encryption you need for that uh, so i'm not going to select uh, additional space but if you want to store some application data or you are expecting too much uh, of data onto your disks you can then you can select this i mean you can add it so the next one networking so under the networking virtual network is um, vnet it's a private network uh, sometimes you know if you are creating 30 virtual machines you don't need to expose all the 30 virtual machines by using some public ips you can create them as private and you can expose with a single endpoint or some kind of internet gateway so that you know you are you have a single entry into your complete infrastructure so when you select your vnet then you need to uh, configure the ips also 
uh, subnet works like similar to your office network uh, your infrastructure team usually uh, defines the range of ips within those range of ips only they will distribute all the ips to the office network uh, so for example if you want to calculate you can check cad or uh, range calculator let me try here uh, 10 dot 0 dot Uh, they, they selected 24 i guess yeah so it comes 24 i uh, totally 256 ips you can see ips in range so when you select um, here subnet as tw by 24 totally 256 ips will come in case if you want more then you can select um, sorry eight. so you can select more 23 then if you select 24, 22, 2024. So based on the number of IPs you need within the subnet, within your virtual net, uh, uh, VNet, that is private network, you can select the range and then you can assign the IPs to the each uh, uh, machine under the subnet. So anyway, I, I'm not worried about all those things. Uh, everything is related to that. Public inbound ports, allow selected ports and uh, whether you want a public IP. So when you select a public IP, then you automatically this IP can be exposed to the open world as i'm creating a single uh, vm machine and i want to access it i'm keeping it as a public ip but if you don't want public ip and uh, want to keep it under the private network with a single uh, internet gateway then you can say select none but uh, let me go with this now already in, in inbound ports all uh, all selected in my in the first screen with basics was existing uh, next one is accelerated networking the selected VM size does not support, uh, uh, but accelerated network is enables low latency and uh, high throughput uh, on the network interface. That's the, reason, uh, that's the reason you can select this. And load balancing. I don't need a load balancer now, but in case if you are configuring uh, some 10 different uh, virtual missions and you want to balance the load in between those uh, virtual missions, assume that if I, uh, you, you have two virtual missions, one virtual mission got a too much load and uh, uh, you you need a, some kind of balancer which can see that more traffic on the particular mission and then redirect uh, to the other mission so that your uh, compute uh, you, you can leverage computing power and, and uh, all the missions right so in that case you can uh, enable your load balancer so load balancer uh, there are three types of load balancers uh, application gateway azure load balance and traffic manager so if you want uh, the load uh, to manage between two regions so now i have only one region i'm creating uh, this particular instance under the south uh, us but in case if you have uh, one uh, complete infrastructure setup under the south us the other infrastructure setup is in somewhere in singapore and you want to manage the load in between these two regions then you can uh, select the traffic manager uh, coming to the application gateway, this is a layer 7 uh, load balancer, especially for the uh, application level and HTTP level, uh, uh, you can use this application gateway. Here it is clearly given, HTTP or slash HTTPS, web traffic load balancer. And whereas the Azure load balancer is a level 4 load balancer, it will help you to balance the load uh, with the TCP and UDP ports. Uh, uh, which is like between the which, between two virtual machines and something like that okay so you can select the azure load balancer whether application gateway you want or azure load balancer if you select uh, application gateway gateway it will work for the http traffic if you select uh, azure load balancer it will work for the tcp udp and you can select the load balancer if you have already created okay so anyway i'm not going to select any load balancer here let us go for the to the next one so next management so you can enable your azure security center azure security center provides unified security management and uh, advanced threat protection across hybrid cloud workloads so you can uh, so when you have a managed services uh, like uh, sql azure or app services that security is uh, managed by cloud provider as it is a managed service but when it comes to the infrastructure now you are creating your vm mission which need to be managed by you so 
for that reason you need to compulsorily enable security center so that it will provide you advanced threat protection across hybrid cloud workloads even if you have 100 200 machines you can enable this so that all that advanced threat protection will be and security management will be provided by the azure security center so your subscription is protected by azure security center basic plan anyway uh, then monitoring if you want to diagnose any problems which occurs during a uh, runtime uh, or during the production then you should have monitoring enabled so that you can easily figure out what is the problem so there are different type of diagnostics for the monitoring based on your requirement you can select uh, OS guest uh, guest diagnostics boot diagnostics diagnost uh, diagnostics storage account so all those things so the next one is identity so if you want to enable uh, the system uh, assigned to manage identity uh, for example if you don't want to manage any identity to give the access to the virtual mission uh, with your code or something like that uh, better you enable this so that you know you, uh, azure has uh, uh, the option to create a different type of roles based on the users uh, and that can that itself can manage when you enable this one so you can read here Azure role based access control the life cycle of this type managed identity is tied to the life cycle of this resource additionally each resource example can only have one system as a in uh, assigned managed identity so you can I'm, I'm not going to do that now uh, auto shutdown so if you want uh, auto shutdowns every day uh, at some uh, at certain time then you can enable this and you can select the time when you want the uh, you want to shut down your particular mission and uh, you can configure that but I don't want that uh, enable backup so you, if you want to take regular backups of your uh, uh, VM instance then you can enable this and you can create a resource recovery services vault and then so so, so that you always your uh, backups will be stored to the uh, recover this service vault so I don't need that now but this is always good to have for the disaster recovery uh, in case if uh, something goes wrong with a VM you are you're running and if you enable this uh, backup recovery services vault you can easily retain whatever it is lost that is the reason you have to enable this but uh, as for, for, for the demo I am not going to do that Off. the next one is advanced so first one is the extensions uh, if you want to install any pre extensions you can select here so on your windows machine if you want to install some antivirus or anti malware or some kind of uh, azure pipelines agents so all these extensions if you have any requirement you can go ahead and uh, select them but uh, as i do not need that i'm just coming out of it cloud init in case if you are uh, launching your linux vms and you want to uh, in install something through while it is booting then you can enter those commands here if it is a linux machine uh, definitely it would have come here the small text area where you can enter all your commands uh, which should be run during the booting uh, definitely this the selected uh, images do not support uh, cloud in it because i selected windows submission the next one is the host if you want a dedicated dedicated host for your vm then you can select this so what it happens if you want a literally a physical server where you want to dedicatedly host your VM on that particular physical server you can select this but definitely it will be uh, quite expensive so you can but I don't need it for now but if you have if you need uh, some kind of uh, secured environment and dedicated environment you can go with a dedicated host so the next one is proximity placement group allows you to group azure resources physically closer together in the same region for example if you want to bring all your resources on the cloud bring it to the closer then you can select this particular one it will help you to get a low latency the next one is vm generation so there are two generation vms based on your requirement you can select either one uh, for example uh, uh, generation 1 virtual machine support uh, guest operating systems whereas generation 2 virtual machine support 64-bit uh, windows and also the latest uh, linux operating systems so uh, then again you know generation 2 do not uh, support 
uh, certain features like you can see here as you disk encryption and stuff so based on that you can uh, have a selection of this for now i'm going with the generation one so the next one is tags so this will be really useful when you want to track the billing and uh, identify the particular resources where they are being used so you can uh, uh, create like a vm for my demo website so you can tag those so that you can easily uh, filter even in your invoices for example uh, there is a billing center under the billing center you can uh, filter your uh, uh, invoice based on uh, this uh, tags so that you can easily identify how much cost can vary so you can create number of uh, tags for each and every migrate migrate project and something like that so you, if you want to group uh, with the tags you can do that so for now i don't need it so so that you are at the end of the vm creation you can review and create click on that validation failed failed the reason you have set up rdp ports open to the internet this is only recommended for testing if you want to change setting that's fine where else it got failed under the basics you can see a red mark so let us see what is that the value must be between 1 to 50 characters i think it is too big let me just keep okay then i can directly jump it to the review and create So it will take a couple of minutes to spin up your uh, VM machine. Just let me take a pause. After a few seconds, it showed like validation passed and now start creating it. After a couple of minutes, uh, you, uh, this screen is appeared and then uh, you can see your deployment is uh, completed. Deployment succeeded, go to resource. So this is where you can see your machine. This is a VM instance you have created and you can see all the settings what you have configured already under various options availability set continuous delivery continuous delivery is a DevOps uh, to simplify your deployment pipeline so you can check size disk disk also is co was configured while we were creating this VM instance so everything so that's it for uh, today's session I'll continue this for configuring IAS and deploying the website on the IAS. Thanks for watching my video.